What's up, guys? Lockout men in the truck on the 30 for another podcast today. Unfortunately, I'm not in the truck, but fortunately, I am at home chilling. But I had to get home and get this uh, interview for you guys right quick. This uh, young lady mm, had a story to tell. I mean, it was about three hours long. I mean, I had to like cut and paste uh, doing her uh, doing her little thing. What's up, guys? It's me, Lockout Man, and this uh this video. I'm, I'm about to let this video tell it all. We're gonna play a little bit of it. My experience doing Walmart dedicated. Um, and I didn't know that it was against company policy to do any of that. And apparently, because I I'm gonna tell you all of it. I'm kind of embarrassed because some of the stuff maybe I shouldn't have posted, but I don't know if I'm done with driving yet. We'll get to that after the story. Actually, I'm not even gonna tell the story because I'll just tell you this. Part of the stuff they said was using company logo without permission. And we about to get into all of that. So I want you guys to put your hands together and welcome Dow Face Trucker to the show. How you doing, little lady? I'm good, how are you? I am fine. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I see you've been uh you've been YouTubing for a while. Yeah, a little bit over a year. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, for the people that don't know who you are, because I believe you have like you have like three over a little bit over three thousand subscribers. But for the people that don't know who you are, go ahead and let them know who you are and tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a truck driver, YouTuber, entrepreneur. Any or at the end, that's what I am. <laughs> I um, I started out driving trucks and decided to. Um, show my experience driving trucks and what it's like to be a female that's, you know, like kind of girly driving trucks. And then it turned into just having a YouTube channel where I just want to document my life and what I do. Because my subscribers really don't come for the trucking. They just come to watch what's mm -hmm. going on with me. And then um, I have a slogan called Living Un Unapologetic where I'm just not apologetic for anything that I do in my life. And I want to share that with my viewers so i have a website called dollface nation where my fans and viewers and anybody can go to the website and purchase merch um trucking merch t-shirts hoodies anything it's there okay and that's basically what i'm at right now okay that's what's up that's what's up so i came across this video man and uh and wow uh so how long you been trucking? I've been trucking a little bit over a year as well. I started YouTube the same time I started driving. All right. So how so how did you get your uh, license? Did you go to school or did you go to a trucking company? Where where did it all begin? I went for you? to Night Transportation and oh. got my CDL through Night. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Night school. Transportation. I just got finished doing uh doing an interview with my man D Nitty. And uh, and did a Q and A with uh, Night Transportation on the uh, Make the Call videos. So, so yeah. So, what was your experience uh, at night? What what was the experience? Take me through the process of uh, getting your CDLs through Night Transportation. Well, um, you have to have your CDL permit before you can even apply or really start at Night Transportation. Mm -hmm. And then once you have your city of permit you'll go to a thing called dqp also known as driver qualification process okay and that's about th three days and it's paid and they just do your drug screen your um physical you sign paperwork and stuff like that you do a smith system training which is i suggest everybody look into that if you want to drive professionally and then if you pass everything your physical and your drug screen then you're invited to go to squire and Squire, at the time that I was there, was two weeks. You go to Phoenix, you learn how to do the first week, you're learning how to um, shoot, 
your pre-trip. You're learning mm-hmm. your pre-trip, and then your second week, you're learning how to back, and they teach you how to do straight line back, parallel park, and offset park. Okay. And then uh, other than that, after your two weeks, you pass your little – you have to pass your – the first week, you have to pass pre-trip. You have to pass air brakes. You can't get anything wrong with air brakes or it's automatic fail. Once you pass that, then the second week you do your braking, and then you test for your CDL, and you have your CDL. And you get on a train on the truck with the trainer for four weeks, and you learn how to drive, and then you get your own truck. All right, all right. So in the in the beginning, uh, you getting in getting in and going through uh, night transportation. How many was in how how many people was in your class? Oh man, I don't even know. Um, Initially, like the first class, like because they already they have a rolling class period. So when I got there, there were approximately probably eight to ten people who are on their second week. I was on my first week, so I think probably six people started with us on our first week. Okay, who was the last um, people? Who was so, the last people standing after you guys got your CDLs? Almost everybody except probably like two guys. One guy was like, "Well, how we did it back in the day." <laughs> And they were like, we're like, no, that's not how you do it. You do it how Knight wants you to do it. And another guy, he had a language barrier, and he, I don't think he passed. Okay, okay. Language barrier. But okay. I think only two people didn't go through. So what you, uh, what you was doing before you got into, uh, before you got into trucking? I was in college, um, studying criminal justice, and I drove for Uber. Oh, okay. And then I decided to drive to trucking because I wanted to. It took seven years for me to graduate. I'm a single mother of four children. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to school full time. And it took me um, seven years to graduate. So when I did graduate, I was not ready to go into grad school, which would be law school. Mm-hmm. I wanted to take some time off and just do something. Get away from the kids, get away from everybody, and do something else. So I decided to drive. Well,. I salute you for being a mother of four because I'm sure that is kind of difficult, especially being the truck driver, being away from your kids. What's the what's the ages? 13, 14, 17 and 18. Okay. And then we have two on the way. My 18 year old is pregnant with twins. Oh, OK. OK. So the uh, the, so now the, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> the two teenagers, they're uh, they they helping out. Watching the uh, watching their siblings while you away. Yeah, um, my son is with me, and my thirteen year old, my fourteen year old is in California with his dad. Originally, all of them were gone. That's mm-hmm. why I was able to drive. And then um, they one by one started coming back home. So then I had to start coming back home too. Well, okay. So my, I just have three of them with me here now. So how was how how was the feeling being away from your kids? Explain that uh, for for these young female drivers that do have kids. What was your experience with uh, with your kids being away from them that long? Um, initially, well, I had a long conversation with my children before I started driving, and I asked them how they felt about it. Right, you have to um, have that what conversation. What they want for myself or for them, and they were all on board because they were all supposed to be out of the house. The boys were going with their dad and the girls were supposed to study overseas and out of the state. So they weren't supposed to be home. So they weren't caring if I left and got on a truck. So, um, but then when they started coming back home and when plans changed, they, they handled it with stride. I mean, I taught my children to be self-sufficient. Like I said, being a single mom, mm-hmm. there was times when I had to be at work at four o'clock in the morning, not trucking, but way before trucking where I had to be at work at 4 o'clock in the morning, and they had to get up and get themselves ready for school and, you know, um, make their breakfast or whatever like that. I'll be home to make dinner, but I had to be in bed at, like, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So they've, they've learned how to be self-sufficient because, you know, I tell them we all we got. All we can do is help each other out and, and do our part in the family. So right. when it started to get closer to them coming home, like, things, plans have changed. Um, Trinity, my 17 year old, she was in Houston with, with the dog and Adriana was in Vegas with my mom. The boys were in California and I was okay with it. It didn't bother me as much as long as I knew that they were okay and they were taken care of. Mm -hmm. Um, part of that was, 
I'm happy that they're good because I'm doing something better for them. And the other half was I felt guilty. Like, I love driving trucks, and I wanted to get away and just, you know, have take a hiatus, so to speak, a sabbatical, so to speak, away from school, kids, family, everybody. Right. So I felt guilty. But then um, – I would check on them and ask them, you know, how do you feel? Do you need me at home? What's going on? And they were fine. They probably didn't miss me. <laughs> and um, now it's like I now, like a year later, two years later, mm-hmm. I totally want to be at home. I miss them. I'm obsessed with them. I'm, I'm missing everything. So I think the first year I was happy. Everything was good. Second year, I'm ready to come home and be with my kids. The, so, the vacation is over now. So now um... – so now, being that you want to be back home with your kids and everything, uh, you taking a, a different. Uh, I'm assuming you taking a different route as far as your uh, trucking career goes. What was the one thing you wish you knew before you began trucking? Um, dang, that's a good question. Before I started trucking, I wish I knew. I wish I knew to have savings. Have money stashed <laughs> before exactly. instead of driving. That's, I think that's for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Because so, when you first start out your first year, they always say your first year is the hardest. Right, you're not especially. Make a lot of money. Right, you're not going to make, you know, number one, you're going out, you're just now starting, you, you, you went out with a trainer, so of course that money right there ain't all that hot, and then you're trying to get your feet wet in the, in the, in a water of millions because you know you're going to be set with a with a driver manager that's probably have like maybe 30 40 drivers up under his belt and uh-huh. you know some of them drivers is going to get you know they're going to get uh uh it's on the tip of my tongue but i can't i can't remember uh, per, uh i can't remember the word but they're going to get the ones that the driver managers like the most is going to get the better runs. That's special I, treatment, right? Yeah, special treatment. You Thank know what, you. Though? I believe that it takes, I think, I think the driver managers, like, because I have a really good relationship with both of my driver managers with both of the companies, mm-hmm. and we talk. Like, sometimes we'll be on the phone talking 20, 30 minutes, and they've got other calls to take and everything. And they, I think they would just appreciate a driver that's obedient, and easy to to work with if you're obedient and easy to work with you're you're their favorite if you're hard to work with and complain a lot and cry and whine then you're hard to work with and they don't want to deal with you now you know what i i'm going to i'm going to agree to disagree with you on that because i think that's what the driver managers want obedient drivers the drivers that they can get over on you know what I'm saying? Mm. Now I can understand that the driver, you know, the drivers that complain a lot, that whines a lot. I I get that. You know what I'm saying? I get mm-hmm. that. But as far as the drivers that that the that the fleet managers know that they can get over on, they're going to use that to their advantage. You know, That's I true. mean, I believe in that, yeah. I'm I mean, they're going to use that to their advantage like I mean, Okay, well, we know that this guy don't want to go up in the Northeast, but I know a driver that will go up in the Northeast. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh-huh. I mean, you know, that that right there, I think that's what driver managers, especially at these at these mega carriers, I think that's what they are looking for, drivers that they can, I'm not going to say obedient, but drivers that they can get over on. That's that's what I think. Yeah. That's that's what I think they're uh, looking for. All right. So Wolf, uh, that's now my you only be- regret being in. The- oh, go ahead. Go okay. ahead. My only regret being in the trucking industry is being naive to it. I'm not a trucker. I drive trucks, and I'm very. I was very naive in this industry. So just listening to your point of view when it comes to the driver managers mm-hmm. and drivers just let me know and reconfirm how naive I can be in this industry. And that's what and that's what they looking that's what they're looking for. I can understand, you know, when you get into the industry, you you wide eyed and bushy tailed, and this is something mm-hmm. that's exciting. This is something that you never did before. This is you know this is 
this is just a rush of adrenaline that's coming over you and you trying and you trying to be nice and you trying to be that driver you know what i'm saying but sometimes okay. being nice and being that driver sometimes backfires on you though um you okay so a year so how long you was with night transportation um, I was with Knight, let's see, February. I was with Knight for about a year and five months. Oh, uh, okay. Two so, months, year and a half. all right. So during the time, during the time, what was the training, uh, with, with, uh, with a driver training taught, uh, taught me, taught me through that little, that little space. I think you said it was like four weeks. So you, you four weeks out yeah. with a driver trainer. What was your experience with yes. him or her? Her um, night doesn't allow males train females or vice versa. What? And my wait, 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 wait. What? Shit. Repeat that. Yes. Yeah. So males have to train males and females have to train females. Night and this is at allow... this is at night, right? Yes. Okay. They don't okay. Allow co co training, so to speak. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So, what was your experience with the female like? Can I cuss on here? Yes. Yes. <laughs> By all means, okay, um, be yourself. My trainer was a piece of shit. <laughs> I, I I, couldn't stand her. She mm -hmm. was the worst trainer I've ever had. I mean, she was the only trainer, but she was the worst, the absolute worst. The absolute worst. Um, I can't even. I, it's so terrible. I just really couldn't even go into detail. But all I could say this, is this cliff note. This, this cliff note it. Um, she had control issues. Uh, well, let's see. Let me put it. I can only give you an example. Um, there was a time when she would just yell at me and yell at me and yell at me because, uh, I guess one night, one day we ended up at a terminal and we were taking our 10 hour break. She just left. I didn't know where she went. I went to sleep. I woke up. I rolled the windows up. She never liked the windows to be rolled up in the truck. They had to be cracked or all the way down. Okay. So I went to sleep. I rolled the windows up. She came back at 7 in the morning yelling and cussing. You need to be up and be ready. You need to get up. Let's go. And I'm like, well, I got to take a shower. I got to get something to eat. She's like, no, you're supposed to be ready at 7 o'clock. If you go get something to eat, I'm going to leave you. And I'm like, if you leave me, I'm telling. We were at her terminal. Mm -hmm. If you leave me, I'm telling. Because you can't just leave me because I, I need to get something to eat. I have to eat. Because she wouldn't let me drive. When I drove, I, I didn't have money then. So I had food stamps. Right. So I had to get, like, TV dinners and stuff. You have to eat with a fork or a spoon. Okay. So the only time I was allowed to eat was when I was driving. So I'm like, I need to get something to eat now because if you if I don't, then you won't let me eat until it's time, to, um, it's time for me to drive. Right. And she drove a stick. So it was really hard for me to eat and drive while trying to shift the gears and all that stuff. So needless to say, she left me. Um, the, I told her driver manager. Um, and then when I got back in the truck, we had a big old argument. Uh -huh. And she was like, I was I was just telling her, look, you can't be mad at something that, that you expect of me to do, and I don't do it if you don't tell me that you expect that of me. Okay. Every time you tell me to do something or ask me to do something, I do it with no lip or no problem. I'm here to learn, but you can't get mad if I don't do what you want me to do and you didn't tell me that you wanted me to do it. If you wanted me to be up at 7 and be ready, I would have been up at 6.30 and ready. Should have told her. So then she agreed Should have to told that. you before she left. Right. She should have right. told you before she should have told you before she left. What? She didn't even. She left without even telling me she left. I didn't even know where she was at. I thought she was just, you know, trying to get away from me. Yeah, she should have <laughs> so we she should have so told she should have told you. Other. Like, you know, yeah. I'm going to be gone for, you know, I'm going to take my 10 hour elsewhere. Uh, I need you to be up and ready at seven o'clock in the morning. We're going to roll out at seven, mm -hmm. yada, yada, yada. And, you, you know, you, sh you know, she should have came back and told you. And me, you know, me and um, me and D just recently uh, in our interview, uh, we talked about driver trainers being that way. And it's uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's kind of ironic that that that. Uh, that a female you know came to you like that that's uh that's wild so you would did you manage the 
did you manage the whole four weeks through with her or nope. you had to go with another trainer? The three weeks in, the third, the the first day of the fourth week was the day I got off her truck. And it was a situation where she was like, again, she left me at a truck stop um, and she went home on home time for the weekend. I was at a truck stop on the weekend on home time mm-hmm. with her. And she said, um, Monday morning, you're in charge of the truck. You're going to drive. You're, I'm not here. I'm just on the other seat. You're, you're okay. driving. You're in charge of the truck. So be ready. At 7 o'clock, have your pre-trip done. Have everything done. Have your loads done. Write it down. All of that. So I'm like, okay. cool. I cleaned her truck top to bottom that day. I bought an air, an air freshener and cleaned her truck and made it smell good and look good and everything. Monday right. morning, I was ready. Sitting in the pass, uh, sitting in the driver's seat, ready to go. Pre-trip done, everything good. Truck is clean, great, right? Right. <laughs> she gets in the truck, quiet, throwing stuff around. First okay. thing she saw was air freshener. What is this? This stinks. She throws it out the window. Wow. Then um, she she I had a TV dinner in her refrigerator. She was like, "This has to get out of my refrigerator because it's um, taking up all of my space, and I have to put my food in here." So I didn't say anything. I just grabbed it and I put it in my lap. And then she's like, what are you doing in the driver's seat? You're not driving. Okay. So I said, I didn't say nothing to her. My mouth was shut. I mm-hmm. sat in the passenger seat. So then we start driving and her dash cam falls off. Why did you touch my dash cam? Nobody told you to touch my dash cam. I didn't touch your dash cam. I must have just fell. So what are we doing? And I have this recorded. I recorded it. I'm like, we have to go pick up a load. So we have to go pick up a trailer because we're a bobtail. She's like, wrong. I'm like, well. We don't have a trailer, so the only thing I know of is to go pick one up so we can, because it's a dropping hook. Right. Wrong. So I was like, well, I wrote it down. Here's the paper where I wrote down the load, where we're going to pick up, and we're going to deliver. I didn't know at that time that with night loads, they have letters, and the letters, like um, below the load, will tell you the dropping hook, preloaded, bobtail, stuff like that. So this particular load had, we had to go, um, we can bobtail up there. We didn't have to pick up a trailer. No, this load was a a spot load where we, you know, transfer from other, another driver. Okay. So <laughs> she looks at the paper. She's like, what is this fucking chicken scratch? I can't fucking read this. And she grabs the paper. This is her she talking to you like that? Yes. And she throws the paper at me. I started crying because I wanted to kill her. I wanted to hurt her. I wanted to fight. I started crying. I called my friend. I let my friend hear everything after I recorded. And she was like, what do you want me to do? I said, call. She was like, you want me to call somebody? I said, yeah, everybody. And she's like, everybody? I said, everybody. Because this lady is listening, so I can't really tell her what I want her to do. She's like, okay, I'll call your driver manager. I'll call the manager. I'll call the operations manager, whoever I got to call. I'm like, thank you. And so I'm, as I'm crying, my trainer is like, are you going to sit there and cry all day? So I decided to write an email <laughs> to See, the operation manager. This, you, you, doing, this you, you doing this all at the same time because I'm about to say that you you better not have not done nothing at that time. By the way, this. I didn't by, fight her. No, not fighter. Not fighter, not fighter, but definitely oh, no. reporter. You know what I'm saying? Because oh, yeah, this ain't this, this ain't the way to train. This ain't the way to train nobody. You don't train nobody mm-hmm. like that. And they and some of these mm-hmm. trainers, you know, some of these drivers that I talked to so far that had trainers like that, man, it's it's crazy that they that they are still driving for the company. Yeah. Oh, she got fired. Oh, oh. it was even worse. It was worse. More. It was more than that. After she got so, I emailed the the company and um, the the operations manager told her what happened. Mm-hmm. They immediately routed me back to Vegas. She tried to victim blame me I was like I'm the victim here I'm working in a hostile work environment you're the one who was yelling at me and what? now you're going to get me fired I was like oh well you shouldn't have spoke to me the way you spoke to me and then I got off her truck she had another student the student emailed me it was like is this your trainer I'm like she said like, what's your trainer's name I'm like I'm not going to give out no names yeah, that's don't... not what I do yeah. she sent me a picture of her driving in a uh, snow calling me paths down the down the hill at night time in the rain, playing Candy Crush. While she driving? I was like, yeah, that's my trainer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I yes. said, <laughs> yep, that's the trainer that I had. And she ended up getting fired, I think. Um, she said she told somebody 
I played spy. I was playing spy with her. I had somebody wow. spy on her because I wanted because she was trying to get me fired and get my YouTube taken down. Wow. She was saying that it was slander and all this stuff. So um, she told somebody that she got in a car accident and she's a medical leave. But somebody within night transportation told me that she got fired because she, she got an accident because she was playing games while Man, driving. That's that's crazy. Well, that's uh, that's karma. That's karma for your right. ass. How 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 old was she? Was she, was she young? Old? I think she was like 37, 38. Oh, she was in her thirties. Okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, man, that's crazy. That is a crazy training story right there, man. And this is from a lady. Yeah. I, I would expect all of this from a man. Are you? All right, all right. So I did an interview with uh with my girl Queen Trucking. You you familiar with her? Yeah. That uh -huh. is that is my girl right there. I'm, I'm sure you've seen her video on her her experience with her trainer, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. so that's crazy. So where are and you the stuff that happened afterwards that yeah, I'm going I, that I went through. I know, right? It's kind of like it, it's it's kind of like parallel. Wow. Um. Mm -hmm. So how long how long you uh how long you stayed with Knight before you moved on to the next company? I was with Knight for a year and a half before I moved on to the next company. Knight's a great company. It's great for learning. It's great for you know getting good driving habits. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. They weren't paying me enough. I got evicted from a house that I was living in in Vegas and had to live on my truck for six months because I was not getting paid enough. I'm I've heard drivers hear says they're getting paid good money. Mm -hmm. You know, they're getting paid great money. But yeah, come on, you I was too. like, some checks are good. Mm -hmm. Some checks are bad. So I, just, I said I needed a company where they had guaranteed pay, where I know for a fact if I have a breakdown, if the route is not good, if, I only, if they gave me a short route, no matter what, if I go on home time, no matter what, I'm going to have a guaranteed pay every week. That's what I was looking for. You know, so YouTubers, you, YouTubers will definitely come on at least back in the day when I when I started. I started about uh, about five years ago, and I you know started watching these YouTube truckers coming on here saying, "Yo, look at all the money I'm making. I'm making this, that, and the third. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm about to get about two thousand dollars a week, and uh -huh. I got into I, I got in you know got into the training phase, and my my chest was like. Four hundred and fifty dollars. I was like, yes, yeah, my chest were four fifty in training too. Yeah, uh, after, after taxes, like three eighty. So exactly, <laughs> and I'm over here sitting like, wait, I I thought y'all said I'll be making right. I'll I'll be making like two thousand fifteen hundred dollars. Then afterwards, afterwards, the 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 first you know first couple of checks was like yay, but then after that started getting bullshit routes and sitting and detention and all this other stuff and i'm like dude i ain't making no money i don't where where's where's this two thousand dollars that y'all talking about where where is it i, I don't right. I, I don't see it I, I don't see it so throughout your um mm -hmm. throughout your um throughout your trucking experience you you only rocked out with two companies what's the yeah. what was the second company that you uh that you rocked out with and what was your experience with them? Martin Transport was the second company. Martin Transport. Um, it was like night and day between night and Martin. Mm. With Martin, you can you can get hired if you have at least six months experience. Mm -hmm. They have guaranteed pay. I got a, I had a dedicated route. Well, not dedicated, excuse me. Regional route where I made a guaranteed pay of $1,000 a week. So, for example, when, you, when you're at, on the road, you get paid... You go on home time, and that's coming out of your pay. Like, not coming out of your pay, but you're not going to – it's about $200 a day. If you calculate the miles and how many miles you can run per day, it's pro between 100 and 200 a day. So if you go on a home time for two days, you're missing out on between two and $400 a day. With Martin, I was making $1,000 a week no matter what, whether I went home or I was on the road. If I got more miles and I made more money, I just and then the detention is paid automatically. You get paid detention after one minute. All right. So, so this, I so, made a little bit more money at Martin than I did at night. All right. I did a video on that too. So this uh this video that that uh that I came into, you was talking about um uh, you was talking about 
you got fired from Martin because of yes. your uh because of your YouTube. And I previous video that I did. Yeah, the previous I, re I deleted that video though. Yeah, I I went back to uh I went back to uh to look for it. I'm I'm over here, I'm on your web, I'm on your uh page now. And I went back to look for it, and I'm like, "What video is she talking about? What video is she talking about?" I'm like, "Wait, what, what video?" Yeah. And I see, I, I see the, the, the apologetic video that you, uh, that you talking about that you, uh, that you got fired. Yeah, I, um, I deleted that video because they had a, a multiple points why they fired me. Um, they said that I was using company logo for my own gain without permission. Mm -hmm. Um. My dash cam footage, they said that I was driving while recording video. So the dash cam, I guess, I can't use that video because I think I'm driving. Um, they said I was using, I was showing customer paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, and the Walmart distribution center where we have a terminal. Mm -hmm. And then I did something that I'm not going to talk about, but I do admit that I was wrong for doing that. I didn't know at the time that it was wrong, though. None of this that I did that I thought that was wrong. I wouldn't put it on video because I know there's so many haters and critiques. So um, I decided to delete the video because when I first recorded that video, it was just a day in the life of Dollface. Like what it's like to drive a Walmart dedicated route because that's right. what I was doing that day. And a lot of people don't get to experience. They always ask, Doll, do, do a video of just your day, of how a day in trucking. Right. And everybody has these videos. So I was like, well, I'm going to do one too. Okay. And I did the video. Uh, I started out connecting to my trailer, um, pulling up the landing gear, connecting to the trailer, showing how I had a gap between the landing gear and the trailer and how you could fix that gap because okay. you don't want to jump the fifth wheel. And then I showed me arriving to the distribution center, how you could tell if um, something is frozen or if it's dairy. It doesn't have any, like... It didn't have any, um, what is it called? It's not like a bill of lading. It's just numbers. And then um, I showed what, how tight the parking was to get in and out of the Walmart stores where you're delivering the product at the Walmart stores. Mm -hmm. And then I showed it was all blurred out, so you couldn't really see. But I was like, this is why I can't do the keto diet because all the food that I can't eat, but it was blurred out. Okay. And so, they so, said that I was showing all this stuff that I wasn't supposed to show. And this that's that's kinda crazy because a lot of a lot of YouTubers show their their uh their company, you know. Was there was right. there something that you had to sign off like a social media? I don't know. I still don't know. Because I asked him, I said, You never give gave me a warning. You never told me that this was wrong. I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to do this or I wouldn't have done it. Right. And I was like, your ignorance doesn't um, count for an excuse. What? And I'm like, okay, well, when, when do you want me out of your truck, dude? Because I'm not about to sit here and argue with y'all. <laughs> because I was re getting ready to get ignorant, and I don't want to I don't want to do that. So how can I get out of your truck, then? When do you want me out? So they, doing... I don't know what kind of policies they have regarding that. So they didn't even, they, they didn't even, that you know, that's something like, what happened to me you need if if you hadn't uh checked out one of my uh videos what happened to me at u.s express it called ambush and um i was brought into the um i was brought into the uh well i was routed my, yeah i was routed back <laughs> my uh my yeah. driver tech was acting up and i did a video on it you know what I'm saying? I was mm -hmm. telling people like, yo, my driver tech went out. I had to, I literally got, uh, well, the DOT officer was, was cool as fuck, but he, you know, he's still written it up because I didn't have my, I didn't have, you know, my, my paper law book the right way, but you know, he, mm -hmm. he written it up, but it wasn't like a legit write up. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I did a video on it. So, you know, I told my uh told my fleet manager at the time, it was a female, and she was like, oh, "Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and route you route you in to uh to get the, you know, to get the driver the driver tech fits." I was like, "I tell you what. Let me pick up a load 
I'm about 600 miles away from Ohio. Let me pick up a load. This is during the holiday, too. This is like 4th of July. This is the week before the 4th of July. And I was like, let me get a let me let me get a um load that will take me home. I'll stop over at Springfield. I'll get a I'll get the driver te- fits at Springfield and then I'm good to go for my home time and then I'll come back home. I mean, and then I'll come back on. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought was the plan. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I I take the I take the load that I was on over to Amazon, drop that then I get a call. Hey, uh, uh, lockout. I'm like, what's up? Uh, I want you to come over to Tunnel Hill, Georgia. Tunnel Hill, Georgia. For what? <laughs> so you can get the, uh, so you can get the, uh, the, the driver tech fix. I'm like, uh, okay, I'm, I'm 600 miles away from Ohio going home. You want me to come? Right. 900 miles bobtail not pick up a load this is bobtail up to tunnel hill georgia to get the driver tech fits yeah 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 right. i'm like okay now th- I- i'm brand new i'm still new with the company and like you said i was naive too you know what i'm saying i was naive too i'm like oh okay but no no problem so I'm behind. I get up there. I, I'm at the terminal. I take the truck in. The guy fits the, you know, guy fits it. The, the wires was corroded or whatever, whatever. But he put new wires in. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm good to go. I walk into the uh-huh. I walk into the office and I'm like, yo, Haley. I'm like, yo, I'm ready to go. She was like, um, um, a, a new lady. She said just like this. A new lady from safety wants to talk to you. And I'm going like, <laughs> and at that time wow. I had, you know, at that time I kept my GoPro, you know, I got like a strap, uh, you know, I keep my, I have a GoPro on my arm and I had a GoPro on my wrist, you know, because I, at mm-hmm. that time, at that time, if you've seen some of my earlier videos at that time, I was recording everything, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everything I do, every milk and cranny that I do, do I record road footage. I recorded what I did a day in the life of lockout men and all that good stuff. So she was like, you might want to mm-hmm. leave your, you might want to leave your cameras here. And, uh, I, I didn't know you was a, I didn't know you was a YouTuber. I was like, yeah, I've been a YouTuber. I've been. Mm-hmm. been recording videos ever since I got here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From the right. from the orientation all the way up until now. So I go walk into the office and here's the lady, you know, she was like, um, I had to wait for the fleet owner. Never met this man. Never, ever met this man. <laughs> Never, I talked to him once in my two years with the company. I talked to him uh-huh. once. That was it. He comes in. Hey, uh, hey, lock out. Never, you know, um, never, uh, you know, unfortunately, we had to meet up under these circumstances. And I'm sitting down like, what circumstances? circumstances. Yeah, what circumstances <laughs> we, we meeting each other under? So the lady starts talking and she goes, um, what, do you know why we brought you here? I was like, shit, I'm under the impression that we, uh, that we fixing my driver tech. Uh, did you make mm-hmm. a video of that? Uh, hold on right quick. Oh God. She said, uh, she says, um, uh, did you make a video of that? Hold on. Let me see if I can bring it up. Hold on. Driver tech. Hold on. Let me see if I can bring that up. If I can still find it. Uh, I mean, it's, I, yeah, it's, I, I, I got it. I found it, but it's like, it's like, it's like deep into my, into my archives. But, but yeah, I told her, I was like, yeah, I, um, I said, yeah, I, I did a video of, um, of the driver tech. I said it, it crapped out on me. So I, I did a video on it. So she was like, well, did you have uh did you have the recording device in your hand? I said, uh no. I, I said I had the recording wow. I said there was a recording device, but I had my GoPro strapped to my hand. My hand is still 
my hand is still uh, hands free. You know what I'm saying? It was, uh, I said, mm-hmm. my hand is uh, hands free. So what? So she was like, well, because of our um, no tolerance for, you know, handheld, uh, re- uh, handheld cell phones, we, we're going to have to let you go. And I'm sitting there like, let me go wow. where? <laughs> I'm like, let me go where? I'm I'm like, you know, at that time, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I got, you know, I, I'm I'm like one of their, you know, one of their safety bonus guys. I was I was getting the safety bonus every week. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I, uh, I get my lows every, uh, I, I, I agree to all the lows about 90% of the time, even being, even being stuck in the Northeast majority of the time and with, with right. no, no problems, no, um, uh, no, uh, you know, no whining or nothing like that. And you mean to tell me you're going to let me go because of this video that I made about the driver tag, because you can't say Mm -hmm. that you can't say that, uh, I had it in my hand. Well, you know, in the video, it looks like it was in your hand and it, it wasn't, it was not in my hand. And that's, that, that was, that Mm -hmm. was crazy. And then from that point on, from that point on, I always say that if you get called to safety for any reason, it is never, ever good. It is never, but ever. They, never, they didn't even say to come to safety. How they did me was I had a load going to Temple, Texas, because I was headed home for home time. Mm-hmm. And so the next morning, they changed the load to get um, dropped off at the terminal. So I'm like, maybe they want me to go to Dallas and then come down to Houston. Right. So he was like, just um, come and see me when you get when you get here. I'm thinking, okay, some random drug test. But then every time he usually says, you're not in trouble. He was just come and see me. So this time he didn't say I'm not in trouble. So I called, I texted him. He didn't answer. So I called him and said, am I in trouble? What did I do? And he was like, just come and see me. And the way he said it in his voice was like, I'm so disappointed that I have to tell you this or that this is happening. I tried to fight for you, but right. there's nothing I can do. My hands are just tied. And I went in there while I was in there talking to them. Um, they were telling me, they sound so disgusted that I did YouTube. Like they hated it. Mm-hmm. And while I was in there talking to them, they they locked my truck. They put a steering lock on it so I couldn't leave with the truck. <laughs> wow. That was never my intention to leave with their truck anyway, but I did want to drive closer to the front door so I could use the bathroom and use the trash can while I was cleaning my truck out. But, um, yeah, night transportation had no problem. They endorsed me doing YouTube videos. Well, yeah, night, yeah, yeah, night, night endorsed. Night and Prime definitely endorse uh, drivers to do YouTube, but mm-hmm. but Martin came to you like like in disgust, like really you did YouTube? Yeah. Oh my god! But I refer people from YouTube too. Oh my god! That I refer is, drivers from them. That is so crazy, and I'm and that that lightweight hurt at my heart when I seen when I seen your video. And uh, you was uh, you was talking about it. Who was uh? The crazy this... part thing. The crazy thing is though, while I was on my way to the terminal, JB Hunt called me and offered me a job. He said, "You still in the market for a job?" I said, "Maybe." I'm on my way to my terminal. I might not have a job afterwards. Oh my <laughs> god! You it. know that's how that's how I got put on with J and R Um Sarah <laughs> called me. Sarah called me right when I was still in the when I was in U.S. Express office and asked me if I was still enter if if I was still in the market for a job. I told her I was like, "Hold on, give me about a couple of minutes and I'll call you right back." After I called her back, mm-hmm. she uh, offered offered me on. I told her, "Look, let me get uh let me get um let me get squared away over here and I'll come to you after the holiday." And boom, that's how I got put on with Jay and Ashwagandha. Man, so. Mm. <laughs> So now, so now you're back at home. Uh, where where are you from exactly? I'm from California. I lived in Vegas. Now I'm in Houston, Texas. Man, you okay? You make you make you make five. There you go, my Houston people. There you go, five. This is the fifth interview with a Houston trucker. 
give it up, give it up for Houston, man. Who was the uh, who? So before you got into trucking, who who uh, who who was the people that uh, that been the most influence uh, to you uh, in trucking? Um. Well, when I was searching for how to get my CDL, I went to Roadmaster, I think, mm-hmm. and they told me to look at Trucker Brown's videos. Oh my God! No, they didn't. And then, no, they didn't. They did. They they actually <laughs> said they actually said watch Trucker, Trucker Brown. Has Brown. Some good videos. Yes, that's I, how I remembered. It was easy to remember. The color brown, Trucker. The color brown, Trucker Brown. That's how I remembered it. Oh and I saw a lot of his videos. And I'm like, okay, he doesn't really have things that I can use. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another trucker that I saw. Because then I started looking for stuff that had to do with women. Like, where the women at this driving? I need to see their point of view of driving. And I didn't see a lot of them. I at saw that... Pink Baby Doll, but she didn't really have, you know, instructional videos. Sunshine, she didn't really have it. Miss Diva, I didn't really see her until later on. So I'm like, there are no women out here driving. I'm about to make a YouTube. But I think the person who, who inspired me the most, honestly, <laughs> Chuck around. I'm saying that with my head down. <laughs> you say that with your head down. Well, you know what? Look, I, 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 I pride me to start driving. Really. I, I pride myself on being the no drama channel. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't mm-hmm. I don't like drama. I don't like to bring it to my channel because basically mm-hmm. some of these some of these YouTubers and why they got so many subscribers and so many views is because they 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 watching it for the drama. You know what I'm saying? Right. Who are you gonna get into it? I next? know that for a fact. Right. Because Who? whenever I have titles that are really controversial, this, that just screams drama. I get thousands of views. It, Anything else, exactly. I get like hundreds of views. Exactly, and that's how and that's how mine is. If I if I talk about like if I talk about Lizzo and 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 that incident that she did on uh, uh at the at the ball game, boom, fifteen hundred. I talk about lot mm-hmm. lizards. I got two hundred thousand. That is my most viewed video to date. <laughs> But if I just talk about mm. like regular stuff like trucking or or something like that, pfft, nothing. Mm-hmm. It's, it it it's like crickets. And that's why just, I said I wanted to get out of trucking YouTube. And just last year, I I I went through so many issues with with YouTube. I you know I I flip flop with my with my content and. You know, yeah. YouTube, somebody over here hating on me. Like I did the I did that. I don't know if you're familiar, but remember that family got in a fight in Disney where um uh, where the family was fighting, the dude was beating up on his sister or his girlfriend or something like that. I did I've a re- never heard of that. I did a yeah, I did a reaction video on that. Mm-hmm. YouTube strike me. I had a, I had a, uh, I had a, really? uh, yeah, I had a community guy strike. I had, I had like two, I had two community guy strikes on my channel, and that's when I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to stop doing, uh, uh, reaction videos because they, um, yeah, they, 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 they uh, they, they hating on me. So, but yeah, Trucker Brown, mm-hmm. like in the beginning, Trucker Brown was, I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit, in the beginning. And I'm, you know, I'm mentioning Trucker Brown, but there's other YouTubers that got, uh, that got like large channels too. In the beginning, they was, mm-hmm. they was informational in the beginning, mm-hmm. but later down the later down the line, and now, no, they 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 really, I I guess they just ran out of ran out of stuff stuff to say or do. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. if you if you if you're a veteran like myself, I'm not going to watch you because I'm I'm not going to watch you so you can show me how to slide tandem. I already know how to do that. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So now, you know, their content is just, they're just trying to be controversial, I guess. And mm-hmm. it's, it's just crazy. But some of the uh, YouTubers out here, some of the new YouTubers, like my girl Queen Trucking, she got an interesting channel. Uh, Nick and Carla, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? She, they got an interesting channel. Uh, I love tru- them. Yeah, truck driving diva. Uh, man, she dropped off the face of the earth. 
uh, the <laughs> diva diva trucker. She, I, I'm not. I'm it's not business. Yeah, yeah. She, you know, like I think she did a video where she was out of town and she spent time with the family. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to. I don't want to watch you spend time with the family. I don't. I don't want to watch you. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to watch you dancing in the club. Um, I don't want to watch you doing that. Okay. All right. Cool. Peak nets. And then, um, and then who's, what's her name? Jay Vizzy. No, Trucker J. No, J. 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 Rich. J. Rich. Yeah. J. Rich Live. Yeah. Now in the beginning, well, her, her, her YouTube got, got hacked, but I, I think it was something else, but, um, she, she's more over there on Instagram she's doing videos like when she get up first thing in the morning in the bed talking like dude i don't want to watch you in the bed get your ass up. i used to watch her but then she did a video where she when she was at Stevens and she had put i don't know if it's youtube or instagram mm -hmm. but she had put the camera at the bottom the back on the ground the back of the truck on the ground mm -hmm. and she was climbing up the ladder so the camera was up her ass <laughs> and i said well this is my competition I'm not going to do no video like that. So I stop watching right. every now and then I'll check in on her or whatever, but I, I don't want to compete with somebody that has to use their sexuality. Cause if I did that, I would put everything down. I know that, that for a fact, you know, she. I don't want to be in a competition doing that. And I, like I said, and that's what I don't, I don't want to watch. And that's, and that's what all these other truck drivers or male truckers is looking at. They looking at they looking at yeah. females with the with the big boobs and having their boobs all hanging out and that's that they they not listen to you talking. They they just yeah. they googly eyes. You you and you can tell in the comments, "Oh baby, I wish you was I wish I was there with you or I I would do this that and the third or hello gorgeous and <laughs> uh you gorgeous this and that." And that's the same thing with uh that's the same thing with her her uh Instagram, you know? She's in the bed naked, yeah. you know, she's in the bed naked and you know just splurring off dudes ain't ain't watching that they ain't listening to that they just they watching you in the bed slip. <laughs> yeah a nip slip yeah. exactly exactly you know uh, a lot of my viewers um watch me they say they watch me because i'm real that i don't need to be doing nothing in particular they just like the fact that i'm real exactly and i can i can rock with that so what was the what was that now what was the best resources that helped you along the way? What, what was your trucking resources? Oh man, it was an, it wasn't even really trucking YouTubers. It was CDL School that helped me get my. If you look on YouTube, I think it's called CDL School. They helped me get my um, CDL permit. And then let me look. I forgot what it's called, but it was like this one channel where they teach you how to drive or or to back. Mm. Oh, um, backing skills. Is that it? Because I, I think just, it. I think that's yes, it. Yes, yeah. I came across his content, and his content is fucking fire, man. I mean, yeah, because he has all, and, and Junior Honduras, definitely number one. Backing skills. I think Junior Honduras, I watch him more than anything. This guy's, hold Studio on. Studio College. My truck, um, my trucking skills. That's, that's the name of it. Hold on. Okay. This is him. This is him. Hold on right quick. Let me. Looks like he drive for May Trucking. But his channel right here, and then guys. your boy, the trucker, he taught me how to, he taught me how to um, shift gears and stuff. This, this channel right here, guys, if y'all really want to know uh, how to, how to get your backing on point, watch these videos man because this video his videos is is like i said it's fucking fire man i i kid you not you guys really need to check check this video uh his videos out it's called my trucking skills and that's that's all he does that's all he does is just do uh just do backing just do backing videos and junior junior Hond honduras Honduras. I keep yeah. pronouncing this name wrong. <laughs> Junior Honduras. Mm -hmm. But uh, Junior Honduras, he's definitely... And another uh, guy. 
I used to always watch. His name is it's the the channel is called Smart Trucking. Oh yeah, yeah, the older Smart guy. Trucking. Yeah, I yeah, I'm yeah. I'm hip to him too. So uh now that um now that you're back at home, uh what's what's your plans now? What's 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 the plan now that you're back at home? Are are you going to um, give uh JB Hart a try or you going to give him a give no. him a try or what? I mean, uh I don't want to drive anymore. I'm done. I'm 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 over driving. Oh, okay. But I'm probably have to drive until I get a job that I really want. Okay. So what I've been doing is applying for probably local positions, local delivery positions. Okay. And then if worse come down to worse, I can always go OTR. But right now I'm just, I have a week. I gave myself a week. Okay. To get I'll do my local together. driver positions to, to apply for those. And then um, like Amazon, do the little gray van. I was thinking okay. about doing that. Okay. Now, you know, Amazon, and them, them, yeah, watch out for Amazon. The, the work, <laughs> the, the, the employees yeah. that work for Amazon, they, they'll let you know that it's not a, it's not a good place to work at. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. All right. All right. So, uh, in your opinion, what do you, what do you think people, what do you think some people, uh, hold on, let me see if I'm saying this right. What is what what is something about trucking that people don't appreciate? Appreciate in a good way or a bad way? Either or. Um truckers or four wheelers. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big difference between the two. Uh I would say for truckers, truckers don't appreciate um they don't take advantage of the time while they have it. They don't appreciate. I wouldn't say it would be within trucking. I, I would say they don't appreciate the little things that they have at home. Complaining a lot, like showers and toilet tissue that's soft and fluffy, mm -hmm. not truck stop toilet tissue. Um, I don't know how to answer that question. Mm -hmm. I know four wheelers. They don't appreciate truckers in general. Period. They don't, don't understand that we're here to to pick your freight up and deliver it what you're eating right now, what you're standing on, the shoes that you're wearing, um, the car that you're driving, everything that's in your life right now came from a trucker. And you get on the road and cuss us out and flip us off because we can't stop on a drop of a dime and let you on the highway. Mm -hmm. It's not fair to us. You brake check us because you don't like the fact that we are um, going too slow for you or we, whatever the case may be. They don't appreciate truckers, I believe. All right, all right. And I don't know about truckers. I don't know what truckers don't appreciate. I appreciate everything. That's what's up. <laughs> what do you uh what what is what if anything in trucking that you absolutely refuse to do? Uh tarping, so flatbed. I'm not tarping. <laughs> have you drove flatbed? Because I, I know a friend no, I know I have a friend that drives flatbed and he talks about how you got a tarp in cold weather, and the tarps are like almost frozen, mm -hmm. and you can't fold them and all that. I, I don't want to do all of that. It's too much work for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, dial right face trucker. Summer, I don't like the heat. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming on, uh, chopping it up with me. I know we little went went a little bit over, but I mean, you have some good stories to tell, and I, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you telling it. But let me ask you this: what's what's more important, truth or happiness? Truth. Truth. Okay. Yep. That's that's what's up. That's what's up. Easy to answer that because if you're true to yourself, you're true to others. You'll be happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you just have to be true to yourself. You have to be true to what you believe in, true to your values, true to your morals, true to your standards. And that should bring your happiness because you know you're true within yourself. All right. Well, Dial Face, where, where can our, where, where can our, uh, our, um, our audience could uh, get a hold of you online? What's, what's, uh, what's, your, what's your social medias out here? I, I got you. Uh, let um, me see if I can get you up on. Uh, let me see if I can bring you back. Let me see if I can bring Dial Face Trucker. Go ahead and switch that. All right. So I got your. Uh, I got your uh, YouTube up. What's your? Uh, what's your Instagram? My Instagram is Dollface 
dot nation. And then I have my business Instagram, which is official Dollface Nation. Hold on, Dow. And D O. Yep, there you are, Dow Dow Face Nation. And there, and as yeah. soon as I bring up the Instagram, the first first face that I see is Jay Rich. <laughs> Ooh. But uh, I know, right? The first face that Aww. I see when I bring up my Instagram is Jay Rich. But uh, this, okay, so hey. this is the merchandise that you uh, that you have on your uh, that you have on your website. I see you got hats, uh, t-shirts. On official Dollface Nation's Instagram, that's all of my merch. But Dollface Nation is my personal channel okay. or my personal Instagram. Well, let me, and, let me um, see. Uh, DollfaceNation.com is the website. All right. Um, let me see. Let me see. What was what was the what was the merch store again? Dowface on Instagram. Dowface what? Uh, on Instagram, the merch store is official. Dollface Nation. Oh, official. Let's see. Official. Whoops. Okay. All right. Official is kind of like lost in my damn head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And you say your website is what? Dialface Nation? Dialface.com. Yes. Nation. Yep, there you is. Live apologetic. So yeah, guys, go ahead and I'm um, I'm sorry that, that I couldn't get an unofficial, but my mind just went like a total fucking brain fart right there. But this is <laughs> Dialface no Dialface Nation where she got all her um all of her merch so definitely go there and um and show her some love show her some support uh and her youtube page is is dial face nation on youtube so definitely go there and uh subscribe to her and uh with all that said I click back with all that said thank you for coming on i appreciate you thank you, for thank you. it's you're now a part of the lom community so don't be no stranger, you know, we'll probably get a uh, live feed or or stream or whatever. We'll get something going mm -hmm. on. Shout out to Houston. Um, and uh, and thank you. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. All right, ma'am. I will talk to you later. You have a good evening. And uh, it sounds like your kids is getting kind of rusty. Back, I mean, restless back there. So you probably might need to be with them. <laughs> well he's playing he's playing this game oh okay all right well thank you very <laughs> much dial face and uh yo thank you. more power to you and much success to you in life thank you all right now you as well yes ma'am hold on i got it all right bye-bye all right all right all right y'all that was dial face dial face Dial face. Yes, sir. That was dial face. What do you guys think of that interview right there? Lots of good stories, man. Her trainer, uh, the Martin situation. I mean, we just had a we just had a good, good conversation. I that's and that's what I like. I, I like I like good conversation. You know, sometimes sometimes it just goes over a little bit, but still you you just have to sit back and just listen to the stories that these drivers have to have to tell, man. So, yo, if you guys is interested in coming on to the show, man, definitely get a holler at me. Uh, lockoutmen at Gmail or lockoutmen podcast at Gmail dot com. Get at me. I'll give you a contact number. We could text and we can um, set up a time where we can get this going. Yo, I am your humble host, Lockout Men. I really do appreciate it. Hey, before I go, I did mention that uh that I found that that I that I found that video um about the driver tech. And uh here it is. Yep, that was the uh that was the that was the video. That was the video that got me um that was the video that uh that that got me ambushed at uh US Express. So if you guys want to watch the rest of it, it's called Trucker's Thoughts on Driver Tech Again. And the 
uh, and the ambush video on at U.S. Express is called Ambush. Check both of those out. All right, guys. Uh, if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. I am Lockout Man. And until next time, you guys have a blessed evening. And uh, I'll come back at you with another video. Another video. Oh, oh, and check out the podcast on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, Google, uh, iHeartRadio, and the rest of the uh, podcast uh, platforms. Peace.